In this video, we're going to solve example 4.2. Example 4.2 reads this way. A man whose body mass is 80 kilograms stands statically on a bathroom scale that rests on a flat floor. The mass of the scale is 2 kilograms. And then there are three parts. Part A, what is the normal contact force applied to the man's feet by the scale? Part B, what is the normal contact force applied to the scale by the man's feet? And part C, what is the normal contact force applied to the scale by the floor? So let's start with part A. Part A says, what is the normal contact force applied to the man's feet by the scale? So we're being asked about a force that's applied to the man. So it would be a good idea for us to make a free body diagram that illustrates all the forces acting on this person's body. So here's my free body diagram for a man. And the forces that are acting on his body, well, one of those forces is an upward normal force, and that's what we're asked to solve. But that's not the only force acting on his body. If it were, he would be accelerating upward, because there's only one force acting on him, and it's in the upward direction. There must be another force, and of course that other force that keeps him from going upward is his body weight. So I'll draw that as a downward arrow. It doesn't really matter where I draw it for this example, but I'll draw as a downward arrow that I call W. Now, how we're going to relate W to N, what we're trying to solve for, is through Newton's second law. So Newton's second law says the sum of all the forces acting on a body is equal to the mass of the body times its acceleration. In this case, the forces that we're going to be considering are only vertical forces, and it's vertical forces that cause vertical accelerations. You are also told, however, that this is a static situation. Static is a word that tells us that acceleration is equal to zero. So what that means is that the vertical acceleration of the man's body is zero, and then the sum of all those vertical forces, both of those vertical forces, is then zero. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with an upward normal force, and because I'm going to write this n in as a positive variable with a plus sign in front of it, that means that what I've done is assume that up is positive. If up is positive, then down is negative, so I have to write minus w equals zero. So the normal force acting on the man's feet is simply going to be equal to the body weight. And we can of course solve for the body weight because we're given the man's mass. It's 80 kilograms. So the normal force is equal to the body weight, which is going to be equal to uh, m times g, the acceleration due to gravity. In our case, this is going to be 80 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 1 meters per second squared, and I can go to my calculator, I'll bring that in here, and I would multiply 80 so my normal force is equal to 784 0.8 newtons. And the question says to give magnitude and direction. So we found the magnitude, and because we drew this in as an upward force and the number came out positive, I would just say that that is an upward force. So that is our answer for part A. For part B, the question is, what is the force that is applied by the man's feet to the scale? So we just found the force that was applied by the scale to the feet, and now we're being asked to find the force applied by the feet to the scale. So these are two bodies that are in contact, the man's body and the scale. So by the third law, we know that whenever two bodies are in contact with each other, that the force from the first on the second is equal and opposite to the force of the second on the first. So instead of a force of 784.8 newtons up, I'm going to have an equal force that is 784.8 newtons but in this case, that force is going to be a downward force. So that is going to be my answer, and it's just a straight application of the third law. There is no need to balance any forces in order to get this answer. It's just a simple case of two bodies being in contact with one another, exerting equal and opposite forces on one another, which has to be the case according to the third law. In part C, like in part A, we're going to solve for a normal force acting on the scale, this time by the floor. So if I draw a free body diagram for the scale, so I'm going to draw a rectangle to represent the scale. I know that there's a force from part B acting on the scale 
that is a downward force of 784.8 newtons. I know that there is a normal force that prevents the scale from going through the floor that I'll try to find. I'll call this NF for the normal force from the floor. And then there's one other force that I should draw in here, and that's due to the weight of the scale itself. So I'll just draw this as a downward arrow, and I'll call this WS for weight of the scale. So now, in contrast to part A, where we had just two forces acting on the body, now we have three forces, but the equation we're going to use to solve for the normal force is the same. The equation we're going to use is that the sum of all the vertical forces must equal zero because the scale is static. So again, I'll choose the convention that up is positive. So I wind up with NF minus 784.8 minus the weight of the scale is going to equal zero. And so then I can solve for the weight of the scale is going to be equal to 2 kilograms times 9.81 or 19.6 newtons. And so now when we solve for the normal force, we can write that normal force is going to equal 784.84 plus 19.6. So if I take this 784.8 and add to it 19.6, then I get 804.4 newtons. And again, we have to give a direction here, and the force on the bottom of the scale will be an upward force. And that is how we solve example 4.2.